Hi, I'm Julie Swanson, the Life Skills Lady. Hi, I'm Juliana Featherman from Making Authentic Friendships. And we have joined forces because we met online and we think that our missions intersect with each other. So Juliana, um, could you first talk to everybody about what is Authentic Friendships and how did you get that started? Yeah, sure. So I founded an app called Making Authentic Friendships, and it is an app that enables individuals with special needs to make friends based on their age, diagnosis, interests, and geographic location. Um, my brother is two years younger than me. He's 24. He has autism and ADHD, and he inspired the initiative. So it's Making Authentic Friendships, MAF are also his initials. Um, and, you know, growing up, it was really hard for him to make friends. Uh, he struggles with some social skills. And I always felt really bad when I would leave to go out with my friends and he didn't have that opportunity. So once I got to college, I decided I wanted to try to change that for him. Uh, so I created the app. It has been running on iOS and Android for almost two years. And we serve 7,000 people in all 50 states and 75 plus countries. So we definitely serve people all around the world, help them connect with other people like themselves. Um, and that's what we really like to focus on. So to make that authentic friendship is really helping these individuals find people like them because everyone wants to be interacting with people that are similar to them. And that's yeah. really what we focus on in making authentic friendships. So yeah, well, that's the just. I love it. And that's why when I, you know, came, I've been following you for a while and I love the mission. I love that you did it, um, you know, um, for your brother and for others. And um, I just think it's wonderful. So I appreciate that. So now why don't you tell us about Life Skills Lady? Right. So I am the mother of a young man who's 27 years old on the autism spectrum and he's wonderful. He's very impacted by his autism in that he, um, he has an intellectual disability. He is nonverbal. Um, he doesn't read, he doesn't write. He's, he's very impacted. Having said all that, he's fabulous, wonderful, um, but he requires a, 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 you know, a higher level of support. And um, I'm also a special education advocate and I've been doing it for more than 20 years. I got started because I was advocating for him. And in my practice, I, I do a lot of um, advocating for students with autism and other disabilities. But the trend, the disturbing trend that I saw um, in kids who are getting ready for adulthood in those transition years is that their um, IEPs, their individualized education programs were sorely lacking in life skills and adaptive skills. And so I really took on this mission to bring attention to what life skills are and um, you know, helping parents understand that they can be incorporated into the IEP and just how important they are. And in fact, there's research that shows that intelligence does not predict how well we do in adulthood, but life skills do. So that's sort of my mission. And we, our missions intersect because the skills we need to make and keep friendships are life skills. You know, Juliana, as you know, there's many skills that go into making and keeping friends. And due to the core deficits in autism, um, this can be something that is very challenging for many of our students and young folks um, and adults who have autism spectrum disorders. So one of the skills that I want to share with everyone is just that is a foundational skill is conversations. How do you start a conversation? How do you keep a conversation going or otherwise called topic maintenance? and finishing a conversation and just being able to have small talk and that turn taking that goes on in having conversations. So I know that and in your app, you address this. So can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, so basically we know that this is an issue for a lot of individuals uh, with special needs that they struggle with this specifically in autism. And that is why within our messenger that we have on the app, we actually provide uh, suggested conversation prompts. So if someone needs help or ideas in coming up with how to start or keep a conversation going with a potential friend, uh, we do provide examples within the chat. So you could just click like suggestions in the chat and it'll give you suggestions on what to say. So it could be something like, how was your day? What did you do today? Do you like sports? Just general things that might be easy for me or you to think of, but for these individuals, that's a lot more difficult. Um, so we really just put that into place so that they feel a little less stressed out and they know that they have that as um, something they could use if they are struggling within that conversation. Wow, that's brilliant. Thank now, you. Juliana, what age do you have to be to use this app? So to have a, a profile of your own, it's for 17 and up, but we do have much younger people on the app. It just needs to be used by a parent or guardian. Uh, so if you're under the age of 17 when signing up, a parent or guardian has to be with you and then it's signed up under their information. But then within their profile, it would say like, Julie, yeah. but my son is however okay. old and has whatever diagnosis. Um, so yeah, that's what we do for that. Oh, that's wonderful. So, okay. So for all of you folks who are watching this, if you have a child uh, who's still in school, um, we just want to make sure that you know that um, these foundational skills for making friends can be absolutely included in your IEPs, your individualized education programs. And uh, Juliana and I want to make sure that we encourage you to reach out to your school team and ask them to incorporate these um, skills into the IEP. Yeah, absolutely. I know when my brother was still in school, my parents were very involved in his IEP and his meetings and talking with his team. So I would definitely say as a parent or even a sibling, I sat in on a lot of those meetings as well. Uh, it's definitely important to be involved and really advocate for your loved one. It most certainly is. And how lucky is your brother to have all of you on his side in those meetings? Yes. Because we know those meetings can be a little overwhelming. Yeah, my mom crazy. cried in all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Another skill, a foundation skill for making a friend and keeping a friend is understanding social cues and body language. So for example, and we know this can be difficult for many folks who have autism. You know, if I make a face, a disapproving face, that's a cue for a friend to maybe say, oh gee, this person doesn't really like talking about this. Or if I'm crossing my arms, it might mean I'm disinterested. Um, and so we just really want you to know that understanding body language and social cues, again, is something that can be incorporated into the IEP as a foundational skill for uh, making and keeping friends. Juliana, how does that play out on your app, making authentic friendships? Sorry, it's just authentic. What's the making authentic? Yeah, friendships? it's that was right the first time. Um, yeah, so that is a great uh, point. Obviously, that's, again, something that people don't think about because to me or you, it's just second nature to be able to understand body language and things like that. Um, really, I think the way it plays out for the app is the advocates like you, like the parent, um, or whoever's listening to this, really making sure that these things are included in the IEP because having those skills is going to help use a service like making authentic friendships. Um, and as individuals get older, there's a lot of like community programs, uh, places where they could go to be around peers. And all of these things are going to be so um, imperative for them to be able to succeed in that type of situation. So whether it's in a community setting or whether it is you made a friend on my app and you need to use these skills, it's just gonna be so important to set that foundation for them to be able to really use every avenue they can as they get older. So I think it's very crucial. Right, and you know, I wanna give a shout out um, to probably my favorite um, resource for 
learning social competencies for um, folks who have autism. And I don't know if you've ever heard of it, uh, Juliana is um, socialthinking.com, Michelle mm -hmm. Garcia winner. Mm -hmm. You know, look, I'm not the person who makes up this curriculum, right? We just want to bring to your attention that these are things that can be in the IEP. But I encourage everyone to also go to um, socialthinking.com um, with Michelle Garcia winner. We'll have to give her a, a nice tag um, because I boy, it's just one of my favorite curriculum for um, learning social competencies. Another skill, foundational skill for making friends and keeping friends, and a lot of people don't think about this one, is to have a pretty good repertoire of leisure skills. And this can start really early in a child's IEP, Individualized Education Program. It can include things like reading books, watching movies. Um, of course, we all know that most kids <laughs> like to do video games and social media and all of that stuff, which can come with its own dangers as well. Um, you know, swimming, walking, hiking, etc. cetera. Um, but I find in working with parents who have kids um, who have autism that leisure skills is rarely included in the IEP. So I just want everybody to know that can absolutely be something that you should be thinking about. So Juliana, how does the app um, incorporate interests or um, leisure skills? Yeah, so we actually match people, uh, as I mentioned in the first video, based on a few different criteria, one of them being their interests. Um, and I think this is a really interesting topic because I personally know from my experience that the individuals I know with autism are usually like hyper fixated on certain things. Um, so even like more specific, let's say they really like movies, it's usually like one specific movie that they're just like obsessed with that they'll just watch every single day. Um, and I think that could be a little um, hard when it comes to meeting people because like if the person on the app really loves the movie Scooby-Doo and someone else they talk to, you know, doesn't, um, it's hard for them to even understand how they can be friends with someone who doesn't love Scooby-Doo the way they do. So I think it's really important to not only, you know, put these in the IEP, but also teach them that just because someone doesn't necessarily have those same interests as you, um, they could still be your friend. And yeah. on the app, if you have, you know, a friend match that you have a lot in common with, but maybe not the interest part, it's really important to be open-minded about that and be like, oh, I see you really like sports and I really like movies. Like maybe did you see this movie about sports and really try to entertain other people's interests as well as your own. It's a really important skill. So one of the things that I've learned in all the years of um, advocating, and it's, I really say, I think it's the most important skill we can teach our um, kids who have autism spectrum disorders and that is being flexible and really going with the flow and maybe doing something you don't want to do. Um, and this is, the, you know, this can be really hard for some of our kids, um, but it really is a great adaptive skill. And especially when you're, you know, when you're with friends, we, in our friendships, you know, Somebody might say, well, let's go out to a Mexican restaurant. We can't stand Mexican food, but all six other people want to go to a Mexican restaurant. We suck it up and we go to the Mexican restaurant, right? right. So I think flexibility is, is so important. And oh, by the way, that can be incorporated into the IEP as well. Yes, and that's a skill that's hard for anyone. I think even people without special needs sometimes struggle with that. So it's definitely a hard one, but definitely very necessary also. Yeah. When I was um, working on flexibility with my son, and we used to set up situations all the time, and we would reinforce him with, you know, what was, uh, what, he, you know, whether it was a um, something edible or one of his squishy lizards that he's like, he likes. And I would always just say, look at you, you're being a flexible guy. And that's the language we've always used. And so he's learned that when he's able to sort of go with the flow, um, he sort of get re he gets reinforced, um, but I'm not going to lie. It's not an easy thing to teach, but it can it can be. Please talk to your IEP team um, about that. Another skill to consider as a foundational skill for 
making friends and keeping friends is really those social niceties like these are hello goodbye those seem so standard right but how we do that does matter um the ability to start a conversation stop a conversation um the ability to offer someone a compliment or let's say you need to show somebody your disapproval how do you say you don't agree with them um these are all of those social niceties that sometimes um if you don't have those skills you might appear rude or abrupt which can then stop a friendship perhaps and we don't want that from happening so how what goes on with the authentic friendships app around those those types of issues yeah so as mentioned previously it's just so important to have these foundations in order to be successful and using tools like mine um, but it's very difficult. I mean, we have like an, uh, a button where you can report a user and that's meant to be used for safety. So people can report people if they feel like threatened or uncomfortable. And obviously that's very necessary, but a lot of our users don't really understand that. And they'll report people for not knowing the cues. So like if someone messages them twice or something, they're saying like, oh, this person's messaging, messaging me a lot of times. They're stalking me. And obviously that's not true. They just don't understand that as like a kind of normal thing where someone might message you two times in a row. Um, so really teaching the individuals to understand these cues and differentiate between, you know, this is bad as in dangerous and this is bad as in maybe right. it's just like a little annoying but it's not necessarily threatening to you is just very crucial. Um, and again, I talk about it a lot but that's one of my goals with making authentic friendships not only to help people make friends, but to also help reiterate and teach them these life skills that'll hopefully carry them into real life experiences. Yeah, and you know, those safety um, social cues are so important. And we talked about, um, you know, um, understanding social cues and body language. And, you know, just to go back to that topic, really having those skills is so critical. You know, when, and, and this is like the hardest thing to teach, right? It's so difficult. So I love the fact that your app has those um, features in it. That's wonderful. Yeah, and honestly, it being online and the world we live in being so online heavy makes it even more difficult because it's hard for anyone to read cues um, right. over texting or over social media right. because yeah. you can't look at the person. You can't see their facial expressions and things like right. that. So, I mean, I just think that online adds a whole nother level of complexity and difficulty to that situation. So it's even more important that you start early on teaching them these things. Right. So I often like to make sure that parents have in the IEP for life skills like internet safety and, sure. um, you know, social media safety, for sure. um, because we know that this can be something that um, gets gets young kids and young adults can get them into trouble if they have misread um, a social cue or, or uh, you know, body language as an example, so. No, absolutely. And I feel like you probably see it too. People with um, special needs get taken advantage of and even people without special needs get taken advantage of online because they try to talk to people and it turns out that person is not a good person. And that's also why within the app, we have a lot of um, pop-ups that say, don't give out your personal information. Uh, you know, if you're going to meet a friend, make sure it's in a public place and all these things and tips to keep the individual safe and just reiterating those skills. So, you know, that's, you bring up a good point, you know, obviously with autism, um, I think it's something like 40%, don't quote me, I might be wrong, um, of kids and young adults, people, who have autism um, also have um, coexisting intellectual disability. Mm -hmm. And I think that it, it does make a difference as to whether or not you are someone who perhaps um, has an intellectual disability versus um, not. And there are, you know, I mentioned Michelle Garcia Winner, um, socialthinking.com is really designed for folks who don't have intellectual disabilities, but then there are other curriculums like circles um, who may that might be more appropriate for folks um, who 
uh, are uh, have lower um, intelligence quotients. So um, that just complicates things as well. But um, anyway, I have loved um, talking with you about how we intersect and please follow Juliana at Making Authentic Friendships. I love being her friend and following her. And I really, um, it's just such a wonderful app. Thank you. Likewise, it's been amazing. I've really enjoyed learning these things, things that I haven't been reiterated on in a while. So thank you for that. Um, and yeah, we'll follow, we'll have my followers follow you at Life Skills Lady and we'll all keep in touch. It'll be great. Sounds like a plan. Thanks so much. Thank you. So if you guys want more information on me or Making Authentic Friendships, you can follow me on Instagram at Making Authentic Friendships or on Facebook at Making Authentic Friendships. And uh, my DMs are open. You can message me. Feel free to ask any questions. But I really like to post a lot of resources in the community, um, among other things. So take a visit. And I'm excited to talk to you. Well, I love following you. Thanks. And I, I follow you on both of those platforms. Thanks. And if you want to learn more about, um, you know, the importance of life skills and the full breadth of life skills and how they matter in your child's um, development and adulthood, um, you can follow me on Facebook at Life Skills Lady and Instagram at Life Skills Lady. And I also have a website www.lifeskillslady.com. Amazing. <laughs>